How's it going, y'all? So I wanted to do a little bit of Elite Code, um, kind of switch it up from what I'm normally doing just because I'm kind of getting burned out on web development and React and stuff. And I mean, I do it all day. Like I, I do web development all day and to come and make more YouTube videos of me doing React stuff. Kind of gets boring. So I wanted to try Elite Code. I'm gonna do an easy because honestly, some of these things are so hard and I used to be able to do these. I was on the programming team in college, but it's been like 10 years since I've, 10 or so years since I've done that. So I'm gonna start with an easy one, hopefully. <laughs> And I'm just going to time box this like 30 minutes. If I can't solve it in 30 minutes, then I'm just going to give up. Hopefully I can solve it because that will kind of suck if you watch this whole video and I don't solve it. But let me read this out. Reverse string 2 says it's an easy. Uh, given a string s and an integer k, reverse the first k characters for every 2k characters counting from the start of the string. If there are fewer than k characters less left, Reverse all of them. If there are less than 2k, but greater than or equal to k characters left, then reverse the first k characters and leave the others as original. Um, so the wording is kind of confusing. Uh, honestly, like it's kind of confusing to read, but if you look at the example, sometimes it can help highlight like what you're doing. So it says the first k characters would be a, b, and then that's two. So we just look at the first two characters. So that becomes BC, and then we skip ahead to four characters ahead, which I guess would be like EF, and I think we switch EF to FE, and then we go G. All right, so the algorithm is pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of like writing it up and figuring out how to do that. And this is my first time using leak code in a while. I don't know if I even used this in the past, but let's just try to figure out what we're doing here. So if we have a string, which is S, and k, we kind of need to loop through it and for every k characters reverse it. But I think we should probably start with this. If there are fewer than k characters left, reverse all of them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say like let start index is equal to zero. And then I'll say if start index uh, plus k is less than s dot length then we've kind of reached this this condition right i think if i did that right and then it says if there are less than 2k if there are less than 2k but greater than or equal to k then reverse the first k character so maybe we should also do like an else if start index plus two times k is less than s dot length. So I'll put this if statement here. Sometimes it's just like putting the the actual like description right in your code helps you understand it, I think. But let me make sure I do this right. If there are less than 2k, so 2k plus the start index is less than the length. You know, I might need to do less than or equal to. You know, do I have this do I have this set up? I think it needs to be greater than or equal to. If you go out of bounds, greater than or equal to. It's been a while since I didn't some, done something like this. But if there are less than 2k, but greater than or equal to k, so let me say this and start index plus k is still less than s dot length, which I guess it would be, right? Because we've already determined. Yeah, I don't think we need this. We'll figure it out. Um, so what we need to do is like kind of loop through the string. And I'll just make like a new string here called like building string. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, I'll say new string is equal to an empty string like this. And there's other ways to do it more performant in JavaScript. But let's just do that. Do they have a dark mode on this? I don't know. I don't know what they do. Right, I'm just going to do new string plus equals and then s dot. I th think I can say substring. And I'll say start index, comma, k. So that's going to take the um, a number of characters from the start index. And then I'm going to go ahead and just say plus equals k like this. OK. Hopefully that works. Um, actually, I need the plus equal 2k, I think. 
Actually, let me let me undo that. So we'll add those, and then at some point we need to increment the start index. So let's just go ahead and say start index is equal to plus equal of k because we took the substring of start to k. Um, I might need to do that. Keep saving my file on accident. Yeah, this problem's hard. I'm telling you, if I had to do an interview right now, I'd probably fail. If they ask me questions like this, like <laughs> I've been coding for 10 years, I know how to do like DevOps, Terraform, I have to do back end, front end, React programming. But if they ask me a question like this, I'm just not going to be able to pass. <laughs> it's just, it's hard stuff. Um, but let's just go ahead and like look at this real quick. If the start index plus k is greater than or equal to length, Oh, I'm, uh, let me, I'm sorry, I'm like doing something else. I think this logic needs to be the else. Okay, so this is like the normal flow where you just like grab the current start plus the K and you append it to new string. Um, and then we probably want to plus equals the K here. Or maybe even plus equals two times K. Now we'll do, we'll do plus equals K. And then we have to just take the normal amount of characters. Am I thinking about this all wrong? I could be thinking about this all wrong. Like really, I could just split it by all these different characters and then loop through them again and just like reverse them as needed. Is that kind of what we should do? I might try, I might try changing this up a little bit. I'm going to say const chunks is equal to an array. And then I'm going to loop through this thing by chunks. So let i equal 0, i less than k, i plus plus. Actually, I'm going to say k, say i plus equals k. So loop through it k at a time, and I'll say chunks dot push s dot substring i and then I plus K, maybe. So let's just try this out. I'm going to go ahead and just delete all this stuff right now and just print out what chunks is. And I don't know if this thing has like a console somewhere. If I hit run code, what happens? Oh, I guess I have to click this console button. Let me load up my, my inspect terminal down here. A function whose declared type. Okay, so I actually need to return something. I'll just return an empty string. I am using TypeScript, although I'm not getting any TypeScript IntelliSense on this whole thing. So it's like I'm not sure why I'm using TypeScript. To be honest, I might as well just switch it to JavaScript. Kind of dumb. Um, let me run it again. I just want to look at the console output. Okay, I know it's the wrong answer because I'm not actually like. Output empty string standard out AB. Um, okay, this I lesson needs to be S dot length. Let me try it again. And in fact, I'm just going to switch this to like JavaScript because, like, what's the point of TypeScript if I'm not getting any IntelliSense? And when you switch your solution, it deletes your code. Like, okay, that's, that sucks. Let me do this. Maybe it didn't delete my code. Maybe I just didn't see where it went. All right, so we get back A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So I think what, like, if I make these chunks, I think the chunking is maybe working, but it's saying that, like, basically, for every other chunk, you have to, like, reverse it. So I'll just go ahead and like loop through the chunk. So let chunk of chunks. And I'm going to say let new string is equal to an empty string. <clears throat> and I'll say chunk or I'll say new string plus equals chunk because that would be the string. And then I'll go ahead and reverse it. I don't know if there's a way to reverse. Does JavaScript have a reverse method? I don't know. I think it does. Okay, I've already forgotten. I've forgotten if JavaScript was a. I've forgotten if JavaScript has a reverse method. That's how late it is right now. So now, if I would do this, basically for every other chunk, which in fact I probably need to do another like let i equals zero i less than chunks dot length i plus plus. 
uh, and maybe i plus equals 2, because that'll skip over chunks. And then this should, you know, let me, let me do this. I'm going to say i plus plus. And then I'll say if i mod 2 is equal to 0, then I'm going to append the reverse chunk. Else I will just append the normal chunk, like so. So this isn't going to solve the problem yet because there's still more we got to do. But let's just run the code and see like what breaks. Chunk is not defined. Um, okay, yeah, I have to do chunks of i. And then this will be chunks of i. In fact, I'll just pull chunk up here. That might make it a little bit easier to understand. <clears throat> and uh, let's try it again and see what happens. All right, what do we get? We got back this. <laughs> so I'm not really sure why it's printing out... Um, why is it printing out all of this? We loop through all the chunks. For each one, if we're at index 0, we need to reverse it. If we're not at index 0, then we just... Um... I'm an idiot. Okay, this needs to be chunk. Let me try it again. Okay, so chunk is a string. I don't know if the string prototype has a reverse method on it. But, I mean, you could just split on it. And then you could reverse it, and then you could join it. So this is super inefficient, but... Usually it's better to just get a solution and then come back and try to figure out a more elegant solution. So this one actually worked. Um, that test worked. Now, I'm going to say that this is going to fail on these other instances where it says <clears throat> if there are fewer than k characters left reverse all of them which i guess would work because like there are less than 2k but greater than or equal to k characters and reverse the first k characters and leave the others as original i think this is just here to throw you off i think i might have solved it let me let me submit this and actually let me see if this actually works. Run example test cases. Let's see what happens. Okay, it it seems like it's passing. I mean, I don't know what happens if you submit this. You only have one test case that you can actually use. Oh, I guess I could throw in this and run that. And that would also should print out BACD, which it does. I kind of wonder if I solved it. I'll click submit. Who cares? Let's just see what happens. Wow, I did it. All right, so that problem, um, I was trying to address it one way, but I decided to switch my, my thinking and solve it a different way. But <clears throat> my runtime is 10, 100 milliseconds faster than 52% of all solutions. Memory usage is less than 88.62 of all JavaScript online submissions. That's pretty cool. Now I do wonder if there's a way we can make this better. Like this is probably not performant. Like taking a string, splitting it, reversing it, stuff like that. Um, and then also this, like taking these things and pushing them into chunks probably is not the best. And we could probably just do this. Um, uh, I mean, the only th okay, so we got the solution. I do want to try to see if there's maybe a way to like make this more efficient because doing all this like taking the string and chunking it and reversing it and joining it probably not the most efficient way to do this and then also like i believe if you use a var instead of let it does run a little bit faster let me see if that actually changed anything so runtime is 109 milliseconds let me run it again and see if that reduces anything at all so it did it made it, good, it made it a little bit faster now it's 74 milliseconds and then if you wanted to make this even faster how would you do this? I think this is the main thing that we got to figure out. Where, um, 
how do we reverse how do we reverse a chunk um maybe we could do it here where we're pushing stuff in instead and then we could just like join them because i'm trying to think like okay all the stuff i'm doing i'm just pushing it into chunks so that i'm doing the same logic again like i could just at the very least i think i could do something like this So I'm just going to go ahead and say let new string is equal to an empty string. And then I'll here I'll do a new string plus equals this dot split dot reverse dot join. Again, like this is still not going to be that much faster. But I just wanted to like get that additional loop out of here because I mean like why do we do a loop twice? Um, so let's try that. I'm going to go ahead and just return new string here. And let's see if we can kind of make this pass using that approach. Don't need chunks anymore. And then on, on, honestly, like, you can say var new string is equal to this as well. Just try writing the code and see what happens. Make sure it still passes on the original test case, which actually fails now. Um, I wonder why. Oh, wait, because this is actually looping through the chunks. Plus equals k. What am I doing wrong here? Yeah, I can't do the mod 2 thing here anymore. I'd have to actually, like, say, like, var reverse is equal to true. And then I would say if reversing, in fact, I'll say new string plus equals is reversing or just reverse. And then if we are reversing, I'll just do a ternary here for right now. Otherwise, we will do a substring like so. And then I'll delete all this. And then just go ahead and say reverse is equal to not reverse change it and does that fix our issue let's try running that code real quick that passes let's submit it so we had 74 milliseconds in 43 so this actually uses more memory than before even with a single for loop so i don't know if it's like the uh, pinning of all the strings here but Seems kind of strange. Why it would take more? Maybe it's like one of those things as you keep running it, it's kind of, oh, there's here's the history right here. Yeah, so it, it kind of varies a lot based on what you're doing. But again, like, maybe you could kind of reduce this and not have it do a split and a reverse and a join. But at the same time, like, how much time are you actually saving? Probably not that much. You could do like a for loop yourself to do that stuff. But... I don't think it matters. Anyway, I um, hope you guys enjoyed watching me stumble through this. Again, like, it's always good to come through these and try to practice these because they kind of challenge a different part of your brain that you don't do in your day-to-day -day job or when you're doing normal web development. And it's fun to just try to, like, do these little brain teaser things. So if you enjoyed watching this, uh, go ahead and give me a like, subscribe, comment. And if you want me to do more of these, let me know. Uh, leave a comment and say these are actually enjoyable watching me do. Or if you don't really want to watch me do this and you'd rather me go back to React stuff, then let me know as well. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.